So what we've embarked upon is a series of training, training modules and training meetings for our distributors which cover the basic principles of crop nutrition. We've had a distributor group in today uh, and we've been through the, the, the principles of crop nutrition uh, and we've revisited a lot of concepts that have probably been forgotten about. Well looking more at the uh, sales and marketing side is to try and uh, put the product spread or make the product spread uh, fit their particular organisation in the fact that they're not stacking too many products. The training that we're doing, it, it's something we want to develop more and more. And with regard to nutrition, with regard to crop nutrition, there's, there's probably far less information out there in the public domain compared to pesticides. When we have distributors over at the factory for the training meeting, I think they're very, very grateful that that there's some technical information being, being given by ourselves which is not generally available. One of the aspects that we cover when we're doing these training meetings is, is soil and tissue analysis. And what I try to do is talk about the importance of soil analysis as a basis for crop nutrition. You have to be very, very flexible in your approach. You have to look at the variety of different crops and what is important. You have to have an attitude that is uh, open to what the local needs are. Very often in some of the Southeast Asian countries, everything is price driven. Obviously every farmer wants to get a good price, but also there's a desire to have a good quality product. So for instance, if you go to somewhere like Vietnam, there's a huge demand for product because the growth there is very large, but there's a large number of generic, locally available products that are available. If you go to somewhere like Pakistan, there's a much greater demand for high value branded products that people can rely on because they've got fed up of some of the generics that come in and don't do the work and the job that they require. So we look at each country on a country by country basis. There obviously is a commonality of different crops. Everybody grows cereals, everybody grows different types of vegetables and then there's the local variations. For instance in Africa there'll be a lot more focus on crops such as coffee and tea but there's also a lot of cereals. Wheat is grown there, which is grown in a similar vein and a similar approach to the way that they grow wheat and cereals in Australia. So we can transfer technology and ideas between countries as well as looking at novel solutions for novel crops in different situations. A good example of that would be in California, where there's a large amount of almonds being grown, basically the nut capital of the world. And in California, we have to come up with specific products suitable for nuts. For instance, in uh, South America, you come up with products for the coffee in Colombia and Brazil, but it's slightly different from the products that we come up for the coffee in Tanzania and uh, Kenya. In developing a new market and in developing a new range of products, there are some basic processes that we have to go through. It's not all instant and we don't expect people to immediately order to just get started in their fields and uh, into their crops. What we look for is to develop the relationship with the dealer. We look, of course, to supply the person with some samples because they want to see what they're going to be getting at the end of the day. They want to touch, they want to feel, they want to look at and say, yes, this looks like good quality. It's no good just referring people to a website. So it's all part of the ongoing interaction. And that interaction then leads on to discussing with them what their needs are. We have a range of about 200 different products. We have to work with them to develop the right range, which maybe is only going to be five or six different products in the first instance, because not only do they have to be able to stock them and sell them, they also have to have an understanding of them. So once they've received those samples, once they're satisfied that those products are those that they wish, and we're happy that we're going to work with that dealer, at the moment we're flexible enough that as an order comes in, we can deal with it within five to ten working days. And the longest period of time is actually making sure that the product arrives safely at the country that it's going to. The flexibility that we have allows us to ensure that we can ship rapidly and efficiently to dispatch the product to the country so that it's ready to be used as the season commences. In addition to providing training, the Headland website holds a wealth of information for customers including downloadable product, label and MSDS information, as well as a comprehensive and regularly updated online product compatibility guide. In addition, Headland employ a dedicated development and registration manager to ensure that any registration, label and regulatory requirements can be quickly met in relation to our products being used in different countries and markets around the world.